Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to take the time to address a question I get on a regular basis and I see posted on forums all the time, and that is, how can I make Lightroom Classic run faster? Now, you could be using Lightroom Desktop versus Lightroom Classic, and I'll make a separate video for Lightroom Desktop users, but this one is the one I hear the most, and it's specifically for Lightroom Classic users. So I'm gonna show you five ways to speed up your Lightroom Classic. And it's not one big thing. It's not like one way is just gonna make it faster. It's usually, like most things, a few things that will add up to a big speed improvement. So let's dive right in. Here I've got my most recent shoot. I did this for my cousin's graduation. And let's go ahead and go um, on loop view and let's just quickly click through these images and it's changing as fast as I can click through them. Even if I go full screen, same thing, it's going as quickly as I can click. All right, so um, that's the kind of performance I want. I want it to be that fast every time I work with Lightroom. And the, I'm gonna, you know, again, the five things that you can do to help get that kind of performance. And this first one, I can't stress enough because this is really probably the biggest of the five and maybe weighted, it would probably be uh, as big as all five put together. And so first and foremost, make sure that your catalog, that's the document that Lightroom Classic opens up that's showing me all my folders and collections and edit and all that. Make sure that that catalog is on a solid state drive, an SSD. If it is on an external, USB spinning hard drive, it's going to be slower. Everything is going to be slower because the drive is not fast enough to give you performance. We always say storage is cheap, but performance may not be. So you can buy big, you know, big inexpensive um, uh, external drives that hold terabytes and terabytes of, of data in, on, in a spinning form factor, but they are going to be slow. Now, those are okay pretty much for storing and backing up the photos, but the catalog needs to be on your fastest drive you could buy. All right, so let me show you um, just in, in a nutshell how you can even know where your catalog is. So if I go into my catalog settings, uh, it will show me in general where my catalog is. So it's showing me it's in my users folder and T white pictures, TWP catalog, TWP LRCC, which I could probably change the name of that folder. But anyway, here it is. And if I were to drill down on that, that's on my internal hard drive, which is the one built into my laptop. And it is absolutely a fast SSD. So the reason why this is more important than where the actual photos are stored is because this is where all the previews are stored. This is where Lightroom looks first at at photos to show them to you in as fast as it can. Now, if it can't, if it, the previews aren't built, then yeah, it's got to go to your slower uh, external drive to get the photo, build a preview, and then it's going to store it in this folder where your catalog is. So if I were to twirl this down, they're going to be my old catalogs, by the way, but you're going to see lots of preview files. This is what Lightroom's actual Lightroom Classic is actually using to show you your photos. So if this file is on a slow drive, guess what? Your performance is gonna suffer. So again, I can't stress number one enough, put this catalog folder on a fast SSD drive. Usually the one that came with your computer, it's gonna probably be pretty quick, especially the one built in. But if you're running out of space on that and you say, hey, I don't have room, Terry, I gotta put this on an external, then just make sure it's a super fast external connected via the fastest interface you can get, USB 3 or USB uh, 4 or 5 even, uh, or, or I'm sorry, Thunderbolt, whatever it takes to get that fast SSD connected to your computer as quickly as it can perform. All right, number two, and this is one I've been doing for years, and that is building smart previews when I import my photos. You might be saying, well, Terry, I, I, maybe I don't do anything with Lightroom Cloud. Why do I need to build smart previews? Because it's gonna make Lightroom run faster. Uh, now, it takes time to build previews upon import, so that's why I do it upon import. That way, once the images are in, the previews build in the background. Once they're built, 
I don't ever have to think about it again because they stay built. Now, smart previews are different than your one-to-one -one previews. I'm gonna show you the difference here. So for example, if I select these photos, uh, you'll notice, or here, let me select one of these. There we go. You'll notice that it says original plus smart preview over here on the right-hand side. So that means that it knows where the original file is on wherever that folder is, on external, internal, wherever it happens to be, but it also has a smart preview to look at first that is on my nice, fast internal SSD in that same folder as the catalog. So that's why I can look at these images so quickly because they've got previews built. Now, that doesn't mean that those are the fastest previews or even the biggest ones, but those are the ones that are gonna help you perform. Now, if you want the best possible preview you can get out of Lightroom Classic, select your images, go to your library menu, uh, come down to previews and build one-to-one -one previews. Now, one, you know, all of these have uh, you know, upsides and downsides. One-to-one -one previews are gonna be the fastest, highest quality, let you zoom in, so forth and so on. They're also gonna take up the most space. So again, they're gonna be in that catalog folder if you don't have tons and tons of room on the drive where your catalog is, then you may either want to get a bigger drive or not build one-to-ones unless you need them. Now, the thing that's nice about one-to-one -one previews is that Lightroom over time, Lightroom Classic over time, will discard them if you haven't looked at the images in a while. And then it'll build them again if you need them. But it will say, hey, you know, he hasn't been in this folder in six months. Do we need to keep these one-to-one -one previews? let's get rid of them. And you can also discard your previews yourself. If you say, hey, I don't wanna take up the space. I've finished working with this folder. Let's discard all the one-to-one -one previews. Doesn't hurt the image at all. Doesn't affect the image quality at all. It just affects the performance in, when you're zoomed in and looking at those photos. And last but not least, this is where you can build your smart previews if you didn't do it upon import after the fact. So for example, Terry gave me this tip today I should have smart previews, but I didn't do it on, on import. Do I have to re-import them? Nope, you don't have to do anything. Just select the images you wanna build smart previews for and build smart previews. And these do not go away. These will stay, unless you, you know, physically discard them, but these will stay with the catalog forever until, as far as I could tell, unless you decide you wanna discard them yourself. So these are kind of more of a permanent view that will keep things running fast. And these are the ultimate previews for, I would call these the work in progress, for the images you're currently working on, the shoot you're currently doing. You want the fastest performance. It's gonna take a little bit of time to build them, but once they're built, you'll, you'll fly through your Lightroom uh, collections and folders. Okay, next up, number three. And this is more of a settings thing. So this is one that most people don't ever go in and change. And therefore, that's why you have performance issues is uh, one of the reasons. Uh, in the performance tab in your preferences, there's this camera raw cache settings. So two things about this. Number one, increase the size. I think it defaults, if I'm not mistaken, to something extremely low, like five, maybe 10. If that, maybe even one. Increase it, give it some more room to work. So what this is saying is, the more room you give this, the more cache files Lightroom can hold on to without discarding the oldest ones and therefore show things faster like when you're developing, when you're editing your photos. Number two about this is you can choose where these caches are stored. So once again, I'm out of room on my internal drive, Terry. I don't wanna take up any more room there. Or maybe this is a way to clear some room. You can move the location of this to an external drive if you want make sure it's an SSD, make sure it's a fast one. So camera raw cache settings, definitely go in there, take a look at that number. You see, I've got mine set to 100 gigs. You set it higher, you set it lower. Uh, it's just really depending on how many images you like to work on in a particular shoot at a time. I find 100 gigs works well for me for the volume of images I work with. So you might wanna experiment with that number. You might wanna go a little higher, try it for a few days, go a little higher, try it for a few days. If you start seeing like it's not making a big difference, then you know increasing it more is not gonna really help you. All right, so that was number three. Go into your preferences, go to the performance tab and go in here and uh, change this. Now, while we're here, there's a bonus one. For the develop module, use smart previews instead of originals for image editing. I do not have this turned on, 
but it will increase your performance while you're editing your images. Now, if there's a warning. This will uh, allow increased performance, but may display decreased quality while editing. Final output will remain full size and high quality. But in other words, if you're working on an image that's not that high quality to begin with, then this may make it look worse while you're in the develop module to make it faster. And so that's why I don't have this turned on. I'm usually working with high quality images, but I don't have this turned on because I don't want to see lower quality while I'm in the develop module. But again, if you say, hey, Tara, the develop module is dragging on my computer, then by all means, go ahead and turn this on. And last but not least, I wasn't going to really get into this one, but while we're here, make sure that you've got a decent graphics processor. In other words, um, people always ask, you know, hey, I'm about, I'm about to buy a new computer for Lightroom Classic. What's most important? Should I buy more RAM? Should I buy a bigger hard drive? And I always say, start with the fastest GPU you can get. Then, you know, spec out the other things. Yes, more RAM always helps. Yes, a bigger, faster SSD always helps. But the biggest speed improvement you can give Lightroom from a hardware standpoint is a faster GPU. Now, if you're on a Mac, you're going to get whatever the GPU is that comes with your computer. And you can choose one with higher cores and all that. But if you're on a PC and you can build a PC or you, you know, you expect it out with a different graphics card, then choose one with a super fast graphics processor. And uh, that will definitely improve Lightroom's performance overall. All right. Number four. And this is one I kind of found out by accident. And that was one day my Lightroom Classic was really acting just weird. It was, uh, for lack of a better word, it was just weird. I would go to a photo. It would take forever to um, bring up. I'd go to a different photo. It was, I think, show me a different photo than the one I clicked on. I was just doing all kinds of weird stuff. And then I finally realized, hey, when, when was the last time you optimized your catalog? And so if I go to my file menu and choose optimize catalog, then it'll show me when was the last time you optimized your catalog. So that was May 1st and we're at May uh, 28th. And so it's been about a month since I've done it. So hit that optimize button. And I also have this set to do it automatically when I, it backs up my catalog. But um, just optimize your catalog because this will discard and purge stuff it doesn't need that may be slowing things down. And this, you can run this every day. It's not gonna hurt anything, it just, you'll get diminishing returns if there's nothing left to optimize. So you're not hurting anything by how often you run this, but definitely don't let it go too long without running this on a regular basis. And I would say once a week would probably be a good food for thought for backing up your catalog as well as optimizing your existing catalog. So do this uh, as number four. And last but not least, number five, it's gonna sound like an obvious one, so I'm gonna give you a couple bonus ones too. Keep your Lightroom Classic up to date. So in your Creative Cloud uh, app, where you get the option to update to the latest version, they're improving performance on every single release. Even if it seems like it doesn't have a lot of features, they're always working on performance. So if you're two, three, four versions behind, you're not working on the fastest Lightroom Classic that's available more than likely because they've done things to improve performance along the way. Now, since I said I would give you a couple of bonus ones along the way, Let's go to your, uh, since that was kind of like an obvious one, keep Lightroom updated. Let's go to your classic uh, settings and let's go to metadata. And this is one I had on, I used to have on back in the day and I finally realized, oh, hey, things are running slow. I turned it off and then things sped up again. And this is off by default, but in case you've ever gone in and turned this on, then you want to come in and turn it back off unless you have a real reason for using it. Automatically write changes into XMP. So that means that when I go in and make a change to a photo, that change, or I'm sorry, when I edit a photo, that photo's edit is stored in a catalog. But if I have this turned on, when Lightroom's not busy, like when it's just sitting idle, it will write those changes into the folder, into the file where that image is stored. Now, if it's a DNG or a JPEG, then it will store it actually in the file itself. Since these are uh, native raw files, NEFs, it will store it as an XMP sidecar file next to the file. And even though it's doing it while Lightroom Classic is idle, it doesn't always feel like it's doing it when Lightroom Classic is idle. Sometimes it feels like it's doing it when I'm working. So turn that off unless you have a specific reason for having that on. And last but not least, and this is one that I need to do and I haven't done in a long time, 
And that is, you know, we install plugins, we install filters, we install all kinds of stuff along the way. And sometimes we just don't use the stuff anymore. And guess what? Every time you boot Lightroom up, it has to check all those plugins and all those things you've installed every single time, whether you're using them or not. So in my file menu, plugin manager, here are all the plugins I have in Lightroom. And it's just a lot of stuff that could technically just be deleted. Like, I, I can't remember the last time I used 500px. Now it is disabled, so it's not doing anything. But why do I even have this plugin anymore? So I need to go and remove that. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I'm not importing any Aperture catalogs anymore. So those can all go away. Uh, Costco Photo Center, that was a way to send photos directly to Costco for printing. Costco is gone. They don't do that anymore. They they bought or handed that business off to uh, Shutterfly. So do I need that plug anymore? I don't upload the Flickr. Do I need that plug anymore? So you see what I mean? Like these are the kinds of things that you can just scroll through and say, how many of these are you still using? And if you're not, then you can go in and get rid of them. So lots of plugins. Sometimes I'll get a plugin just to try it out. Oh, I liked it or I didn't like it. And if I didn't like it, I, if I don't go uninstall it, or at least at a minimum disable it, then that means that every single time Lightroom Classic boots up, it has to load that plugin. So if there are plugins in here that you know you don't use anymore, then by all means, at least at a minimum, disable them like this perfectly clear complete. I don't use that. Let me disable it. So the next time I boot Lightroom Classic, that plugin will be disabled. So that's my last tip. Five tips to keep Lightroom Classic running faster or get it back to the performance it should be. I hope this helped you. And again, uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Let me know if you want one for Lightroom desktop as well. Some of you refer to that as Lightroom Cloud. Let me know if you want things on mobile. Just let me know what you want and we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. Cheers, everyone. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye, everybody.